planning on killing you. But you're making it very tempting. Hold on! We've got troopers up top. We're running out of road! Not exactly a stealth exit, boys. Let's move! I thought that the end of the war would mean an end to losing more of our brothers. But I was wrong. We can't just walk away. Not with the Empire imprisoning the kid. Secure her in a cell. Omega's been waiting for us a long time. Our mission... It's not over yet. There is nothing of greater importance to secure the future of this empire. Whatever is needed to accomplish this goal, you will have it. They are coming. For all of you. Give us a real challenge! Everyone, down! We're not big on following orders. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. There's a brand new Bad Batch Season 3 trailer that Star Wars just released. There's a bunch of Easter eggs here. Asaz Ventress is back. Everybody wondering if we'd ever see her again, so obviously we'll break it down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Starting with probably the biggest question now, everybody wondering, does this mean that Dave Filoni is going to do Asajj Ventress later in live action during the Mandalorian part of the timeline? Like we have the Thrawn movie, there's the Grogu movie, Ahsoka season two, the Mandalorian season four, just a lot of stuff happening in that part of the timeline where Asajj Ventress could show up as an older version of the character. Ventress? It looks like I'm here to rescue you. For those of you that didn't keep up with what happened to her outside of the Clone Wars series, because the last time we actually saw her in any of the series, any of the episodes anywhere, was in Clone Wars Season 5, Episode 20, which was years ago at this point. That was meant to be the episode where Ahsoka leaves the Jedi Order. She was actually there to help them find out about Barriss Offy, so she actually wound up helping Ahsoka and Anakin. And the cool thing about Asajj Ventress, I mean, there are a lot of cool things, but one of the cool things about her and Ahsoka is that they have a fairly parallel storyline. They both felt abandoned by their masters. Her by Count Dooku more literally abandoned and then turned out like Count Dooku literally tried to kill her. Anakin, to his credit, did try to help Ahsoka, try to get her to stay all those years ago. And he's helping her in present day in his current Force Ghost form. So we don't want to throw Anakin under the bus, even though Asajj Ventress definitely abandoned by her master. But part of the idea is that the Knight Sisters actually went against Count Dooku. He tried to eradicate all of them unsuccessfully. He killed most of them, though, on Dathomir. She and Mother Talzin survive that attack. Asajj Ventress goes on her own to survive, just keeping under the radar, keeping off Count Dooku's radar just in general, became more of a bounty hunter to survive, then came back during that Clone Wars Season 5 Episode 20 to help Ahsoka with Barriss Offee. Then after that episode, we don't really see her again. Eventually what happens is that she meets up with Quinlan Voss. The two of them start working together. She fell in love with him, constructed a yellow lightsaber to replace her Loth Sith lightsabers. Then the two of them go on a mission to kill Count Dooku again before the events of Revenge of the Sith. She winds up sacrificing herself to save Quinlan Voss, taking the brunt of Count Dooku's force lightning blast, seemingly dying, but she survives. Quinlan Voss basically takes her body and dumps her in a pool of magic, that green energy that the Night Sisters use. It's basically force energy. And that was meant to be the last you hear of her. Like, you're kind of wondering what happened to her. The Bad Batch showrunners, Dave Filoni, all those people claim that nothing that they're doing with her during season three tramples on any of Dark Disciple. It's all still canon. The Bad Batch is meant to take place well after the events of that book. So the whole idea is that she survived Order 66. She was alive. She just continued being a bounty hunter in the Outer Rim, staying off the Empire's radar, presumably because she didn't want to be hunted down by Darth Vader and the Inquisitors because she was Force-sensitive. Even though technically she let the Sith Order, she wasn't Sith anymore, she wasn't Jedi either, she did make this yellow lightsaber. 
And even though it seemed like Darth Vader and the Inquisitors were mostly concerned with hunting down anybody who was former Jedi and survived Order 66, in reality, they were hunting down anybody who was force sensitive at all, no matter what their alignment was. Basically, if they caught you and you were force sensitive, if you weren't Jedi or you weren't Sith, like you were untrained, they would throw you into training to become another Inquisitor or they would kill you on the spot. Because more often than not, Darth Vader didn't want a ton of force sensitive people that the Emperor controlled because he didn't want the Emperor to betray him by training another successor and then getting rid of him. So basically, Darth Vader was trying to get rid of all the competition all these different years. He didn't care if they found and saved more force sensitive people, even if most of them wound up becoming Inquisitors. The whole truth of the matter is that he didn't care about any of the Inquisitors either, like he would kill them just as quickly as he'd kill other former Jedi. One of the great jokes of Star Wars and the fandom is that Darth Vader killed almost as many Imperials as the Rebels did. But either way, this means Asajj Ventress definitely survived the events of Revenge of the Sith, Order 66, she's alive and well in present day, which is why I say that she can, she's able to come back in present day during the events of the Mandalorian series, Ahsoka Season 2 for instance. There are a couple other easter eggs here in the trailer too, like it looks like they go back to the Teth planet. That was also the location of a fight that she had with Obi-Wan Kenobi during the Clone Wars. So there are some locations that they visit that are specific to her character in their history in the Clone Wars. It's not exactly clear what she's doing during the events of Bad Batch Season 3, but she'll probably wind up helping the clones get Omega back and fight against the Emperor. Even though she isn't like a good person, quote unquote, like she isn't good alignment, she's more neutral right now. She's basically a bounty hunter out to earn more money. It is probably just one of those situations where she winds up helping the Bad Batch clones. There are probably a couple of jokes that they have when they meet her for the first time too, like they probably try to kill her because the last they remember of her, she was actually serving Count Dooku, she was evil, she was Sith. But if you think about it this way, Dave Filoni just brought the Night Sisters back, they just went to Dathomir at the end of Ahsoka Season 1, does it not make sense to bring Asajj Ventress back during Ahsoka Season 2 and have her help Ahsoka with the Night Sisters? Like, let me tell you about all these problems that they're going to be causing around the galaxy now. Speaking of her connection to Mother Talzin, they just brought back the sword of Talzin, the sword that Mother Talzin wielded during Ahsoka Season 1. So everything the Night Sisters just did in general, coming back during this part of the timeline. Not exactly clear who would play her in live action. It could be pretty much anybody. And because the Night Sisters' Dathomirian race ages a little bit more slowly and because of the way they use their magic, you could also cast a slightly younger actress who's about on par with Ahsoka's age in present day too. Even though technically she's meant to be much older than Ahsoka. It's one of those Star Wars issues where you have different races aging at different rates. They also bring back Cad Bane, who we last saw during the Book of Boba Fett. Remember, this is after the events of Revenge of the Sith when this is taking place, but before the events of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. I don't know if we're going to see Quinlan Voss either, because he's also alive during the events of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Quinlan was here. Yeah, he helps now and again. Not exactly clear, too, if Asajj Ventress is still in contact with him in present day. A lot of people wondering if we were going to see him in live action, too, at some point. I think we will. Like, why else would you say that he's still alive during Obi-Wan Kenobi? But jumping back to the beginning of the trailer, they confirmed that Fee Genoa, played by Wanda Sykes' character, is back from season two. She helped the clones out earlier. She's just helping them out on this mission here. Another big person coming back, Captain Rex, who was also featured in live action during Ahsoka Season 1, even though it was kind of a flashback that Ahsoka was seeing during the events of the Clone Wars, like their live action Clone Wars flashbacks. We'll probably see more from him in live action eventually too, because he's still alive in present day during the events of the Mandalorian and all that stuff. Just a much older version of the character, also played by Tamura Morrison. One of the benefits of playing characters like Boba Fett is that all the clones basically look like you. They made a joke about that during The Mandalorian Season 2 where they're like, how come you can't take your helmet off? Well, they probably recognize me because he looks like all the clones. Fett, let's just say they might recognize my face. They make a couple references to Tech's death during Season 2. Everybody's still heartbroken about that. And there is a brand new bounty hunter who seems kind of mysterious, but his armor looks a little bit like Tech's armor. Then they make a bunch of references to everything that's happening at Mount Tantus and Omega being their prisoner, trying to rescue her, essentially. The whole idea, if you haven't been watching the Bad Batch episodes, is that Mount Tantus is a cool bit of Legends canon that Dave Filoni brought back into the main canon, and it's from the original Thrawn trilogy of books, like Heir to the Empire. He's been slowly recanonizing all that stuff, like Thrawn is now back in live action. But part of the idea is that originally in the Thrawn books, that's where the Emperor kept Luke's severed hand, and it was used during a big cloning plotline during that original Thrawn trilogy where they tried to clone the Jedi Master, and then they tried to clone Luke. 
What Dave Filoni has done now in present day with this version of Mount Tantus is explain that the Emperor is using it for his cloning experiments, trying to create a Force-sensitive clone so that he can continue his life, basically start hopping bodies, which you saw during the live-action sequel movies. Somehow, Palpatine returned. That's why during the trailer where you see him inside Mount Tantus, he says, this is the most important thing we're doing, you will have any resources you need to complete this task. During the events of the Mandalorian, they reference it as Project Necromancer, and it's the people who are part of the First Order, that faction of the Shadow Council, that are actually continuing that later in the timeline. But this is obviously happening like right after Revenge of the Sith. Project Necromancer is a place for that. Yes. Dr. Hemlock is the lead Imperial scientist at Mount Tantus here. He's one of the main antagonists of the season. He was the person that was trying to force Nala Say, one of the Kaminoans who was in charge of their cloning technology in their process, to help them figure out a way to clone the Emperor's body. She thinks of Omega as her daughter because she basically created Omega. Now the Empire is using Omega against her, like, if you don't help us, then we're going to kill Omega. They also just revealed at the end of Season 2 that Emery Carr, one of the other doctors who's working at the cloning facility on Mount Tantus, is another female clone, basically Omega's sister, whereas previously Omega thought she was the only female clone, it's just that Emery Carr is an older version of Omega. Now I know a lot of people, other big question they've had after all the Bad Batch episodes the last couple seasons is will they do Omega in live action eventually too? Because they've already brought back a bunch of live action versions of the clones in that part of the Mandalorian timeline. Like Boba Fett came back obviously, Commander Rex came back even though it was technically a flashback. So now we have Asajj Ventress probably coming back in live action and probably a version of Omega eventually. But we haven't heard too much about Omega coming back in live action. Speaking of people coming back, there's a bit of a reverse version of that happening with Ming-Na Wen's character, Fennec Shan. She's going to show up again, but she also starred during previous seasons of The Bad Batch. Just a younger version of her character before she got all of her Darth Vader cybernetic parts later in the timeline. Thank you very much, Boba Fett, for having her fixed up. There's a whole bunch of other stuff happening during this Bad Batch trailer too, like there's a bunch of crosshairs footage here. He's being held captive at Mount Tantus. They implied that he's also rebelling against the Empire, so he might turn back to help the clones again during Season 3, whereas he turned on them previously. He's had his whole big arc this last couple of seasons, like the fall of crosshairs. Now I think they're trying to do the redemption of crosshairs. And it does seem like there's going to be a lot more Emperor Palpatine during this part of the season. They posted the entire schedule of episodes. There'll be 15 total, but it'll be a three episode premiere. So this is when all the episodes will be releasing. There are a couple other big Star Wars series that are dropping this year. So the other animated one is going to be Tales of the Jedi. That'll be later this year. Don't know exactly when that's going to be releasing, but we also have the Star Wars Skeleton Crew series. That's another spinoff of The Mandalorian and Ahsoka. Those characters will appear in either the Grogu movie or the Thrawn movie. Then we have the Star Wars Acolyte series, but that's like a totally different thing, not really connected to what's happening on The Mandalorian. It's taking place during the High Republic era, long before the events of the prequels. More likely that we'll see a younger version of Yoda, slightly younger, he still would have been pretty old during then, but much younger looking, a little more spry. Maybe, maybe a young version of Palpatine. We'll probably get trailers for that stuff at some point in the next couple of months. There was a bunch of Star Wars news about what's happening with all the upcoming movies and the upcoming series during the Mandalorian part of the timeline. Click here for that Ahsoka Season 2 teaser and click here for that brand new Invincible Season 2 Episode 5 trailer. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.